We're now going to do uh, some data analysis um, on our leaf data. And the thing we're going to focus on in this tutorial, well, there's going to be two things. First of all, we're going to um, look for outliers um, uh, in the data set, which may be from um, something that was typed in incorrectly, or maybe there was a misreading of the measurement or something like that. Because if there was an error, we don't want to count that in our data. Um, the other th and in order to do that, we're going to have to get some basic statistics, um, especially the quartiles and the IQR. Um, and then after that, we're going to find averages of the measurements uh, for each leaf. Now, uh, you can see down here that I have uh, taken 50 more leaf measurements, which I've added to the data set. Um, we want, when we're, when we're doing some sort of study, we want as much data as possible. And so 100 pieces of data is, um, is, is a good amount to have. Um, I want to number each of the leaves that um, I took data on. And so uh, we can begin by uh, going below this 50 here and going equals and then the number above it um, plus 1. And that will prevent us from having to type in each number um, in order below it, and then we can just copy that formula down here, and it fills in the numbers 1 through 100 for us, which is good. Okay, now we are going to calculate some of the important statistics from this data set. Now, for the mean, uh, remember the function for that is average, and we're going to uh, highlight the data. Now make sure you don't highlight this uh, 1 in uh, cell A2 because that's the leaf number. We want to start with the actual measurements of the leaf. And I'm going to go down here and I'm not going to highlight all the way down to the bottom of that um, data because I don't want to average in these blank spaces. So I want to show you is how to take um, chunks of ranges and input them So uh, for the average function. So we've got this range, which is highlighted, and then I can um, click into the formula bar here, push comma, and then I can go down to the other part that I want to include in my average, and I can just highlight that part. You see it comes out as a different color, and the formula bar at the top, um, it comes in the corresponding color. I can bracket, and it's going to take the average of that, the arithmetic mean. And so there we go, 243. The standard deviation, um, and you just start with the ST, and then you see you get uh, standard deviation.p and standard deviation.s. Um, the first one is for a population, and the second one is for a sample. And we're not too concerned with the difference of those in the context of this class, but for this, um, and whenever you're doing stuff for this class, you should choose the population. Um, so I can double click on that, and it gets it going for me. And then I'm going to um, highlight all of the data that I want. Now in this case, I'm gonna highlight everything. Um, And then I'm going to take that, and let's see how that comes out, 55.5416, that's the standard deviation of the data set. Um, the minimum um, equals the min, and I'm just going to highlight that data again. Um, actually, I can just type it in, so I'm just going to um, click in B2. And then I can do a colon, and then just click there, and that will find the minimum for me. And so the minimum value is 155. Q1 is going uh, to be equal to now, remember, we're going to do uh, quartile, and we're going to do dot exc, which is exclusive which means you remove the middle value if there's an odd number of values. 
and we're going to select that data range. So that's uh, B2 through, I believe it is Y101. And then we need to also tell it that's the first quartile, so comma one, enter. And the median is going to be equal to, um, and then we can go B2, uh, Y101, and the Q3 is equal to the exclusive quartile. And that is also going to be from B2 to Y101. Oh, and I need to go comma and three this time to indicate it's the third quartile. Now the range is equal to the um, maximum versus the median, I mean versus the minimum. And I forgot to put the, um, the maximum in here. So what I can do is I can highlight these guys here and push um, X to uh, control X to cut and then I highlight down here and go paste and that just moves that down max will go equals max and that again is in the range from uh, B2 Okay, now notice there's an 856 as the maximum. That tells us there's an outlier in there somewhere. Um, because if you look at the rest of these cells, most of them fall in the high to, um, well, in the 200 range. There's some 300s, but she's 800. Okay, uh, the range is equal to um, the, minim uh, the max minus the minimum. So we can go click on this cell and go... Um, minus and then click on the minimum cell and hit enter. Now the nice thing about uh, referencing cells like that is if we eliminate these um, these outliers then it's going to give us it's going to adjust and give us a, a clear picture of the range. The IQR is the third quartile uh, minus the first quartile interquartile range is 54. Okay, so we have that information. Now, in order to determine uh, uh, boundaries for outliers, we have to use the formula, and this is in the PowerPoint, but it's gonna be equal to, uh, for the lower boundary, which is the uh, number where any, any leaf measurements that fall below it would be considered outliers, um, it's gonna be equal to the first quartile, minus the um, interquartile range uh, times, I'm sorry, that's the, uh, that's the range, so I want it to be the interquartile range, uh, times 1.5. So the lower boundary, the anything, any piece of data that's less than 135 is going to be considered an outlier on the lower end. On the upper end is going to be the third quartile, which is in this case 270, plus uh, 1.5 times the interquartile range, which is right there. And that's 351. So let's double check this. Okay. Okay, now we're going to unleash some of the powers of Excel here. So anything above 351 is going to be considered an outlier. Anything below 135 is considered an outlier. Now, if you go up here, um, there's this box called conditional formatting. This is going to help us out because essentially we don't want to have to like look at, e at all these pieces of data to determine it. We can tell Excel to do it for us and to highlight them for us. So we're going to go to highlight cell rules. And since we're in the upper boundary here, we're going to go greater than. And anything that is greater than that will be light red fill with dark red text. So let's hit that and let's see what happens. Did anything come up? Um, 
No, because uh, we have to highlight the cells that we're referring to. So let's try that again. Um, we're going to highlight all of these cells. And now we're going to go conditional formatting. And it's going to be uh, greater than. Um, and I think that our, um, our value was 351. Okay, and then we can hit OK. Now, we notice that we get um, some highlighted cells here for that are above the upper boundary. Let's do the lower boundary first before we start inspecting this closer. So, um, the next thing I want to do is I want to go to conditional formatting. Um, and then we're going to go less than this time. And we want anything that is less than, oh, we need to highlight the cells that we're working on first. So we're going to highlight the cell range. And we're going to go conditional formatting. And let's make sure we're clicked in the, okay, so anything that is um, less than, and we can see that our lower boundary is at 135, so we want less than 135, and we'll do OK. Okay, let's see here. Did we, we, we got some, some stuff that come up as, came up as outliers. Now, this is really useful because we can see right away that someone whose name shall remain uh, secret uh, measured uh, leaf length at 850 and 856, um, while everyone else seemed to measure it in the um, high to mid 90s, I mean, uh, two, 200s. Uh, it looks like there's a lot of variation in these leaf measurements. If we look at this, we can see there's a 226 and then all the way up to a 290. Um, so, this is something that these, this data that is something that we definitely want to take out. Now, who knows what it could be because it could be because. Um, the leaf was numbered incorrectly or something like that. Um, but it's useful for us to take that out because it, it doesn't belong in the average uh, leaf length for leaf number eight. I would say likewise for this uh, here, uh, this 305, because it doesn't seem to fit in the pattern. Um, we're not seeing anything that was under measured. Here again, we have something that stands out. Two, uh, everything else seems to be in the mid 200s, and this was measured at 550 and 520. Um, that person will remain nameless as well. Um, so, and you can see it highlighted all um, all this other stuff here. Um, and if you don't like the I mean the the visual effect of that, you can highlight it. Let's see here. Can we clear the rule from the selected cells? And so it, it clears our um, conditional, um, conditional formatting rule. OK, so that's the end of this tutorial um, where we've identified outliers. We're going to do some more work on finding averages next time.